coffee tables aren't that interesting. I'm not talking about this coffee table. I'm talking about these coffee tables that look like boxes and hold your stuff and barely do a good job. But what if they could do more? Like go to your fridge and get you a drink or follow you while it carries your stuff around the house or even out of the house. What's up everybody, welcome to Concept Bites. I'm Kevin and today we're turning a bunch of wooden parts into your own walking coffee table. So let's get started. The design for this project is courtesy of Gilliam de Carpenter. He published the Carpendo Pod linkage and we're gonna use that in order to build our very own walking coffee table. You may have seen walking machines like the Strand Beast, which are intricate kinetic sculptures powered by the wind designed by Theo Jensen to gracefully roam beaches. We're taking inspiration from that concept to create something practical for your living room. So the first step is to take this 2D design and turn it into 3D CAD, and for that we're going to use Onshape. So let's start designing and then we'll jump over to Harley to show you what we got. finish the 3D model. All the proportions are done according to the previous linkage design, so we should be able to achieve the exact same walking pattern, as well as having minimal foot slide and maximum stability. Now, we just need to make it. I have some ideas for that. One method we could use is 3D printing. We could take all the files that Harley made, load them up on our 3D printer, and in just a couple hours, we can have a part just like this. However, we really wanted to make them out of wood, so laser cutting is the perfect way to do that. All we have to do is take those 3D models we designed and turn them into 2D images so that we can cut them out on the laser cutter. This will take our 3D printing time from two hours to just a few minutes on the x -Tool F1 Ultra. So we loaded up the files and here we go. I wanna give a huge shout out to x -Tool for sponsoring this video. Their machine helped me crank out a lot of parts in a short amount of time. This table is a lot of parts and if I was to do it over, I would highly recommend 3D printing or CNCing this, but we're already in 2D. So for this project, since we sliced up all the 3D models, we had to glue them all together and essentially we made gaps for all of the legs to fit in between the feet and the hips. So we added bearings and axles in there that are being glued into place. And we're hoping to reduce friction as much as possible so the crankshaft can turn without much resistance. Okay, so we have just about three legs done so far. Here's what one set of legs looks like. It consists of two feet, two hips, and all the struts for the center crankshaft. We also have one of the divider pieces that go in between the legs. We have three more legs cooking in the back here. They're almost ready to be assembled. So this divider goes in between each set of legs. It has an eight millimeter bearing in there that we've pressed into place. And then the motor is going to go onto the first set of legs and it's going to screw onto the divider piece and poke through the other side just like that. But we can't connect the motor right to the legs so we need an offset. So we're gonna use this crankshaft which is gonna put the offset on the legs so that they can move both forward and backwards and up and down to actually take the steps that it needs. Okay, we hooked up one leg and it seems to be working just fine. We hooked up the motor to our desktop power supply but eventually this will be a battery. To get two legs working was really easy. We just created a mirror image and we added an axle through all four of those struts that come off the hips and the feet. For the assembly process, these five millimeter rods run through all the hips. These are what connect the legs to the table. And this is the point at which stability occurs. This is how the table is able to stay level while walking. Once we assemble one layer of legs, we can glue in the spacers that separate the dividers. Now if we turn on the motor, we should be able to operate both legs. Only 10 more to go. The axles in this project were not easy to make. The crankshaft consists of an 8mm axle and all other axles are 5mm. We actually ended up cutting out all the axles ourselves on the bandsaw. Each leg has 5 axles and there's 12 legs, so we have 60 axles to cut. Now 
Now that we have all the axles, I think we're ready to assemble the first half. Each half consists of three sets of legs. They're all offset on the crankshaft by 120 degrees. This ensures maximum contact with the ground so the table never tips. Now let's try our first walking test. First walking test, here we go. Let's try that again. Okay, so it seems like we have half the project working. We have one set of legs that's almost walking, we just have to build the other set, and then we'll put the tabletop on, and then we'll talk about how we're gonna control this whole thing. So we finally did it. We were able to build two of these things. We connected them together with some wooden spacers and some steel L brackets to hold it all together. We connected it to our power supply and it seems to be working. For this project, we're gonna use something called closed loop control. This project contains a motor, two motors actually, but we're just gonna focus on one for now. It has both a positive and negative wire that come out of it. Along with that motor, we also have an Arduino. An Arduino is a microcontroller. It's the brains of the operation. It has a bunch of pins on it that allow us to get signals from the real world, like from sensors, and send signals out to things like motors. Our motor actually contains a sensor. It's called the Hall Effect Sensor. It's able to measure the speed of a motor by counting how many times a magnet passes by it. So we're gonna wire these inputs and outputs to the Arduino, and then we're gonna tell the Arduino to spin the motor. And as the motor spins, it's gonna encounter things like friction, which oppose the spinning force. This is in turn gonna slow down our motor, but that's okay because we're gonna measure the speed with the Hall Effect sensor, and then we're gonna tell the Arduino to spin the motor even faster in order to meet the speed we want. This is closed loop control. Closed loop means the Arduino is gonna set the speed, and then it's gonna check the speed and make the adjustment and then set the speed again. It's gonna happen over and over and over again. You might be wondering how the Arduino is going to set the speed, and that's with something called pulse width modulation. This is a fancy way of saying the Arduino is just going to turn on and off the motor until it gets to the speed you want. It's going to set the motor pin to 1 for high and 0 for low. So controlling the speed is actually really easy. The speed is just a ratio of how on the signal is compared to how off it is. So this signal is on for the same amount of time it's off. This is called a 50% duty cycle, and this is gonna be equal to half speed for our motor. Let's try looking at another signal. This signal's a little different. This signal is on way more than it's off. That gives us a 90% duty cycle, which means we're gonna hit 90% of our max speed. We can set these duty cycles on the Arduino by setting the PWM pins a value from zero to 255. 255 being the max speed, 100% duty cycle, and zero being the minimum speed, 0% duty cycle. Now that we're able to set the speed of the motors, we're able to implement something called proportional control. And this is how you do it. First, we have to find the error, and the error is going to be equal to the target speed minus the actual speed, which is going to be measured from our Hall Effect sensor in our motor. The last thing we have to find is our adjustment. This is how much we're adding to the current signal that we're sending to the motor. So the adjustment value is going to be equal to this KP value times our error. This KP value is our proportional control constant. It controls how much the Arduino tries to adjust, so we'll have to tune that. The error comes from the calculation above. With these two simple equations, we're ready to get started coding and then we'll upload it to the table. Okay, so the circuit for this table consists of a boost converter that is wired to a motor controller, and those go to each of the motors, the left and the right motor. Then each motor has two wires that go to the Arduino, the PWM, and the direction wire. I wanna give a huge shout out to Arduino for sponsoring this video. We're using the Arduino 2040 in the table and the new Nano Matter in the remote. 
The last step for the table is to slide in the battery and connect it up. So the remote for this project is really easy. It's 3D printed and I designed it to look like a Wii nunchuck. There's a switch on the bottom that turns it on and off, and now let's take a look at what's inside. So the main part of this is our joystick. It's uh, up here in the top and it's screwed in with two screws. This is an analog joystick that plugs right into our Arduino. It's got four pins, two for X and Y, and two for power and ground. This goes right into our Arduino Nano Matter, and that's glued in there, and it's connected to our boost converter. Our boost converter steps up the voltage to five volts from our lithium battery that plugs right into the back there. So the LiPo battery is just gonna solder right on to these two ports. This SparkFun boost converter is also a charger, so that's super helpful for this project. Okay, so this is our first walking test. We have the table all wired up with the Arduino ready to go. We have our remote all wired up. It's got an Arduino in the back with a joystick, and here we go. Yo, it works. That's sick. Forward, we can turn, come back to us. Oh, it looks like we got uh, some leg issues that we gotta look at. We'll figure that out. And finally, after all that, here it is. The coffee table is ready to stretch its legs. This was such a fun project, covering many realms of engineering, like electrical, mechanical, and computer science. I think this project shows that you don't have to build something useful to learn useful skills. Thanks for watching.